This is a complete guide on adding AdMob to Unity to get you on a road to make those millions from your game. We'll cover from the point of adding the plugin to Unity all the way through all the configurations and setups that you'll have to do to run your game on Android and iOS devices. If you feel like there is something missing in the guide, be sure to write that in the comments and I'll try to update this video to include that information as well. I'm going to be starting with an empty project, but you can follow along with the project that you're working on. So for the first thing in this project, let's go to build settings and I'll switch to Android because that's the first device that I'm going to be testing. Now we can Google Unity AdMob and go inside here. We want to download the plugin. And here is the download link for that plugin. Drop that plugin inside here and let's click import. One note about this plugin is the iOS resolver is going to actually throw errors if you're using Unity 2021.11 or higher. If you get the error, just restart Unity and you'll be fine. Now I get this pop up that some of the things were changed. So let's actually rebuild it. And while it's rebuilding, you want to go to Google Leads Mobile Unity. And if you want to follow along, you can download this zip file right here. Or inside the sample, hello world assets, scripts. This is the Google ad mob controller that I'm going to be using. So you can actually take a look inside here. It's a very good starting point and I'll show that in a little bit. The plugin is downloaded and it's ready to go. Now we can go inside that hello world assets folder and copy these folders into our project. It will create another scenes folder scene one because I already have a scene folder. So, but we can go inside here and open that up. Now, after the plugin was added, I got this message right here, enable Android auto resolution. So I'm going to actually go ahead and disable it because I'm going to run it manually. So to do that, you can go to assets, uh, external dependency manager. And right here, you can go under Android resolver and run resolve. Gradle is going to download all the packages that are needed for this plugin to work. So we can wait for that. Our resolution succeeded. Let's click OK. But now let's take a look at what we have from this plugin. So the first thing for this plugin, we have this Google Mobile Ads settings. And this is where you want to place the app ID from AdMob for Android and iOS. I'm going to use a test ID for Android and a test ID for iOS. Another important option that we have here is delay app measurement. So what this does, when you turn it on, it delays when AdMob starts collecting information. So this is important if you need to get a consent from your player to allow AdMob to collect information to display targeted ads. When you enable this, the AdMob will only start collecting information after you initialize AdMob. Those are all the settings that we have here. And the rest of the settings are inside the script, that script that I showed. So here it is, the Google AdMob controller. You can go to the AdMob website and go through an instruction here. Some of the things are outdated, but it still will give you a good understanding of what's going on. Now, the implementation that are inside of this documentation is different than what's used in this controller. So this controller is actually using Unity events and you can connect what you want to do on each of these events. The most important event for me is the earned reward event because this is where you actually want to listen if the user actually successfully earned that reward by watching the reward video. The other events are here for you if you want to do something more advanced. But if you're just starting with AdMob, this is the one event that you need to make sure that you know how to use. So currently it's just changing a text value to user earned reward. And if we switch to portrait, you can see it right here. This is where the values can be changing. But to make it more noticeable, what I'm going to do is add another action here. And I will go and connect image. And for the game object, I will set active to false. So if we get successful reward, this Google ad mob image should disappear. Now let's go inside this file. Because inside this file, this is where you'll find the ad IDs that you'll need to replace when you'll be ready to publish. If you expand any of these regions, you can find the ad unit IDs that are inside here. And these are test unit IDs. 
So you can actually test your game with these IDs. After you're done testing and it works just like you want, you need to replace these with the add IDs from AdMob dashboard. I was editing the video and there's some more things that I want to mention. One of the things is how the buttons are connected. So right here, you can look through and find what actions are taken here. So it's actually connected to the Google ad mob controller, this one right here, and it's a requesting a banner ad. So all of these methods are actually exposed and you can trigger them from another game object. Another thing is if we go back to the C sharp file at the top, there's set iOS app pause on background set to true. And this is set so the game would actually pause when the ad is displayed. That's a default behavior on Android. Also, you can set up test device IDs here for your iPhone or Android. Another thing is the events. If you take a look right here, we have six events. And if we scroll down and look at the banner, there are actually four events used for the banner. And the same events are actually being used for banner ad, for interstitial ad, and for the reward ad. The reward ad has two more events that are added here, but just keep that in mind that the four events that we have here, the loaded event, the fail to load, open event, and close event are gonna be triggered by the banner ad, rewarded ad, and interstitial ad. So if you want to separate the events for each ad type, you can add more events here, and instead of assigning the same event to each of these ad, you can assign the specific one. And one more thing with this controller, it has the FPS meter text and status text, and it's helpful when you're testing, but when you're releasing the app, you want to remove that. And the easiest way is to just hide the status bar. The scripts will still in the background try to modify that. If you want to completely remove that, you can go inside here and find wherever this is used and just remove those lines. Now, if you want to add AdMob with visual scripting, I'm currently finalizing super units for that purpose. And I was hoping to have it done by now, but it's taking more time than I initially thought it would be in the lookout for that video, but you can use these events right here and connect it to visual scripting and use it like that for now. You'll still have to go to the C sharp script to modify those unit IDs, but other than that, you can do everything from this controller. Let's run the project in the editor. And right here, you can see that there is some test smart banners and we can destroy that banner if we want. You can request a rewarded ad. And right here, you can see that ad was loaded Then show the rewarded ad wait for the countdown. And when we close, you can see that we got the reward and also displaying user earned reward. Now, one important thing that you need to know is that two events actually get triggered when you close the reward video. So the closed event gets triggered and the earned reward gets triggered. And you can see that if I remove the message right there and I'll run it this time. So let's request that reward add. The ad is loaded and now show reward ad and there is a status ad opened. Now if I close, you can see that we got the reward, but now it's displaying ad closed. Just keep in mind that both these events are triggered when you successfully get the reward. And in this case, closed reward event gets triggered first before the earned reward. With that, we are ready to run it on our device, go to build settings and add the open scene to our scene in the build. I'm going to select the device that I'm going to run it on and let's click build and run it. So I'll call it app mob test, save it and we'll wait for it to build. Click allow access. Okay, so the APK is starting to be copied over to my device and right here it's launching. So we got our test banner at the top, so that's good. Let's destroy that test banner and let's request a rewarded video because that's the most important one. We need to make sure it works. So ad was loaded. Let's show that rewarded video. There is the video and the last thing we need to check is if we get the reward or not. So let's close out out of this reward and we do get the reward successfully because that banner disappeared at the top. And right here we have a message says app open ad not loaded. So that is message coming from this one at the bottom. That is a new type of ad that was tested in the hello world project. And how it looks is if you click request interstitial ad and let's show the interstitial ad, 
close it. When you return back to the game, you basically get this kind of uh, ad. So if that is something that you, you want in your game, you can actually use that. Next step is trying it on iOS. So here I opened the project on my Mac and I'm running Unity 2021.120 here. And right here at the bottom, you can see that there's an error from iOS resolver. And if we go to assets and look for external dependency manager, we can't find the iOS resolver. So what you can do, just restart the project, just close it and open it up again. Now I don't see that error anymore. So we can go to assets and go to external dependency manager. And now we can see the iOS resolver. Click on the settings and inside the settings, we want to enable this link framework statically. So let's click on that and click OK. Now let's go back here once more. And in here there is install CocoaPods. So the AdMob plugin is using CocoaPods to install the frameworks that are needed for AdMob. And if you click install CocoaPods, the iOS resolver found CocoaPods. So I don't have to install it on my machine. But if you don't have it, be sure to install it. So I'm ready to build and run the game. Make sure you switch to iOS platform and now I can click build. I'm going to create a new folder, call it iOS add mob test, click create, and we'll choose this folder to save our project in. The project is building now. After the project is built, Unity is going to try to install the pods and launch the Xcode workspace. But on my machine it actually throws an error. So there's something went wrong when it was trying to install the pods. If you don't get this error on your machine, that means that you're all good and then your Xcode project is going to launch. But in my case, what I have to do is go to the project folder and find the folder where I built my project. And if you look here, we can find the Xcode project, but we don't have the Xcode workspace. So all we have to do is run the pod install manually. You can do that by right clicking and open a new terminal folder. And in here, we can just run pod install. And that's going to check the pod file that is in this folder and install all of the dependencies. Now that that is done, we can go inside of this folder and we can find the Xcode workspace. So open that instead of the Xcode project. And right here we see that you see iPhone target and also the pods that were installed. One last thing that we have to do is sign the application. I'm going to go ahead and do that and we can click run to run it on my iPhone device. The build process is going to start running. And there we go, we have a successful build. Now the app is launching on the device. Here's Unity. We got our banner ad at the top. So let's go ahead and destroy the banner ad. And now let's request the rewarded video. Show the rewarded video and wait for it to finish. Close it. And then right there, add mob image disappeared. So we successfully got the reward. If you found this guide helpful, be sure to click on the like button and I'll see you in the next one.